What are you guys talking about? We're reflecting on tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> You're reflecting on tomorrow. Planning ahead. Oh! Well, that's reflecting on tomorrow. No, I guess we're reflecting on the plans of tomorrow. <laughs> oh! How successful are you in acting in the mouth? We'll see. Huh? Well, we can only put it to the test. Oh. Next time we see him, we can say, grade yourself on those great plans you made. Yeah. Well, the higher question is how do we judge whether those plans are in our highest benefit to begin with? That's it. That's the way to go. But, but I like the uh, keeping the question in mind. Of, uh, Which one? What is the Nophanes question? Oh, that's a, that's it. That's behind Plotino. That's behind all of this. Would you say that's all you need? Well, I think coffee is good. But is it a complete yoga? Yeah, it's a complete yoga. What about the idea of challenges and excellence? Same thing. It's built into the question? Yeah, it's built into the question. What, what do you mean by it's beyond uh, Platonic? What do I mean by it? That it's beyond Platonic. No, but beyond Platonic. Plotinus. Plot uh, yeah, right. Plotinus. Uh, it might even be beyond Plato on some level. Well, you see, uh, <clears throat> See, what these people have done in their translations make a great deal of it so difficult that it's, it's near damn impossible to go through. And what the Balboas have done, have just opened it up. Like, to make a test. Uh, if you look at Proposition 35 in Elements of Theology, Proclus, and you take a look at anyone, including Barbara and David, if you just bring the text with the Greek and say, hey, what do you think of this translation? They'll laugh like hell. Because they leave out entirely the idea of the cell. I mean, not a little bit. No, blum, blum, gone. And therefore, it, it leaves it leaves it very difficult to get into. Yeah, we all did it. So try it out. What's your, 35, 118. Sir. 35, 118. Proposition on it. We did it though. We did it as a, as a Nordic society. We did all the propositions and we allowed 35 to be a bridge, even though poorly translated. Right? Like we utilized the poorly translated 35, 118. Yeah. We didn't see the incompleteness then. Um, see, the question is <clears throat> it's always this question. Do you want to do the book? Then, whatever book you have, you have to do the book. But if you want to sit back and say, wait a minute. Uh, I prefer to deal with the best translation. Now you're in a different ball game. I'm making a judgment. So who's going to say it's the best translation except a scholar? I mean, are you doing it because of its integrity? That's easy. Uh, if you say to yourself, how important is the idea of self and philosophy? How <laughs> minus or? <laughs> And you were just talking about my degree in philosophy yesterday. How the hell I couldn't get through that thing? And they kept trying to do Aristotle and shove it down my throat. Yeah, all they teach is Aristotle. That's right. 
That's all the average age. <laughs> but when you say that, when you have, like, suppose you have the translation, there's no self there, and you're not a Greek scholar, do you see it in the structure itself that it's missing? I mean, you know what I mean? It's oh, yeah. Well, once you get the idea of what's going on. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're yeah, but that takes a different kind of education. But, uh, like, <clears throat> if the idea of self is important, but is it? Yeah. But, it is entirely missing in all of the translations of Proclus. So he'll make the statement that uh, within causes are all effects. And you know, you look at it and you say, uh, it doesn't take too much courage to see that the missing the word self. <laughs> And therefore, <laughs> what it really means is that from the self all things emerge. Yeah, that's, that's like day and night. That's so different. I mean, that's that's so totally different. different. Yeah. yeah, but that, see, and the most important proposition is the self plays a major role. Like, and, and are you familiar with uh, Plato's Parmenides? Oh. There are only 600 times he uses the idea of self there, so it's not too many. Right. And which is why someone can ignore it, because it's not many references. I mean... No, wait a minute. What? It's like, um, it's like they're, really going, they're really going out of their way to ignore it. It's oh, yeah, just, I believe that. Though I don't say that too often in public. Like hell, I make fun of it all the time. I mean, it's like it's like a it's like a, they've sworn an oath not to use it. That's mm. that's how bad it is. You don't think you're just blind? Well, they can't be uh, that accurately blind. <laughs> consistent, yeah. Right? That consistently yeah. blind to one thing. Right? It's, a, yeah. it's a very specific blindness. Yeah. So it's conscious. Right. Yeah. Like in proposition, I mean, hypothesis six, there's more than 40 times he uses the idea of the self, and no one translates it except the Balboas. And by the way, that's more than, you know, 25. Doesn't it? Yeah, because we all want to know about the self. Yeah, who the hell cares about the one? <laughs> right? I mean, it's so remote. Right? It's uh, pure, it's sterile, it's uh, simplistic, it's boring as hell. But you put in, excuse me, uh, they missed the word self in there. Oh, oh, oh. Do they now? Yeah. Suddenly it's like, the text is like... Yeah, yeah, I'm in it now. I'm in it, yeah. It really takes a philosopher to translate it justly. Well, no, see, the rule is that anyone who knows sufficient Greek can translate anything. It doesn't make any difference. That's been the rule. Yeah, a whole bunch of people say that. My uncle Eli used to say that. But now it's required to have that experience. <laughs> you have to have that yoga experience to yeah. properly train. See, that's a big issue. That is, uh, is, it, is it important to get philosophers who can represent the system that they are now translating, or should you get someone who's hostile to it or indifferent to it? I like hostile to it. <laughs> yeah. It's very helpful. So, yeah. But we thought like Thomas Taylor was a philosopher and had the Well, he did a gigantic jump. Mm. But I mean, you cannot you could not survive in Europe in the 18th century with a thesis that hey, the only thing that's wrong is Christianity. <laughs> I mean, 
That's what he said in every, every preface to every work he wrote, you know, which is those people. But is that an explication of why he would leave the self out? Well, officially, <clears throat> what's worth getting is the Edinburgh Review of Thomas Taylor's writings, <clears throat> because that played such a major role in people ignoring him. Now you can look at that review and, and you can see whether it makes sense to you as, as an objective reader. Have, have you ever guys done that? Yeah. yeah, I should bring in a couple of copies. I have them. And you'd be amazed at the kind of logic that's, that's exhibited in that article to put down Thomas Taylor. You say, hey, Jesus, didn't this guy read it? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll drop bring it in. Yeah. If I don't, who can we blame? Nancy. Right. <laughs> She's not here, thank you. Somebody. Yeah. What, what are you bringing a copy of what? The Edinburgh, uh, a, a criticism of, of Thomas Taylor, a contemporary, contemporary criticism yeah. of did Thomas you, Taylor. Did you have the, I, do you have it? I have it. I saw it, it once. Yeah, I, I have it. I'll bring it around. Okay, I'll small. bring it around. <laughs> Ah. So Pierre, it's a new world order. Huh? Hmm? It's a new world order. Which one? The one we're in. I hope so. <laughs> I've been looking for it for a long time. <laughs> Where's the order? You mean Trumpers? We've been trumped. Hey, it's the best thing that's happened to us. I was trying to tell that to you. Yeah, people now have to wake up and see what they lost. And whether it's worth fighting for. Yeah, it's the best thing that's happened. I've been looking around. I, lots of stuff is happening, but I always hear about it on the news. And, you know, I just like to be a number in the crowd once. And it's kind of hard to find out where things are happening. Um, I'm, not in that, I'm not in that loop, but I'd like to get in that loop just to be a number in the crowd. I know the DNC is calling people, Orange County DNC is calling people not in, in Orange County. They're calling people in Arizona and people in, 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 in Pennsylvania, and they're, they're, they're reaching out and trying to get as many people involved as they can. California's already set, it's, you know, it's... it's well, in, in Orange County, it's Scott McCollum. You don't like the DNC, do you? Oh, do you? The people that got themselves hacked and... Huh? Uh, Scott McCowan is a big uh, wheel in the DNC of Orange County. Scott McCowan. Yeah. Oh, Scott. Yeah. And I, I went to his, one of his presentations. He proudly came up to me and said that the number of Democrats in Orange County is larger than the number of Republicans. In wow. Orange. So uh, there's something moving there. I might bump into him because I'm yeah, going to go over no, there. I, I was going to call him and see what we could do. But yes, getting active yeah. and realizing what what's at stake now is should should become more obvious to people. Well, they really need to diagnose the real problem. If you well, just focus on Trump, that's not the problem. He's the, he's the Gentleman. result of the problem. He's the representation of he's it. He's the mere represent. He's just kind of shadow of the problem. Yeah, like the utter denial of truth is a problem. The creation of one's own reality and pushing that is a problem. Like it's gotta be much more philosophic in the sense of like we think we can interpret life in whatever way we want and because we can it's our life we can do whatever we want uh, do you mean there's no alternative facts <laughs> <laughs> i saw that in, i saw that interview everybody gets all wrapped up in this point and says but what is it that we have half the people in our country that roughly half of the voters at least who agree that this is we can do that this is fact that we should support it. Like that's got to be the problem statement that there's. It's an actual opportunity to see the worst of this problem in our culture in him. But if we get lost just in him, well, some other idiot will come along in his place. I don't see me myself getting lost in him. I mean, 
He's the American dream, isn't he? I mean, it's something we're all bought into. Mm. No? No. I think he's a little... No, don't say that. Don't say that. He took it to the next level. I don't know. If, if anybody's disagreeing, I know that myself am trying to improve my physical condition and circumstances. Or yeah, but he just... of my pie to live and succeed and but he just be comfortable. Up, he just blew up the Statue of Liberty, even. <laughs> he just shut down all immigration. He might have started off with millions, but he's self-made. He built his towers. He's uh, an image of self-reliance, yeah, right? His he's daddy a, only gave him one million dollars. Yeah, you can rip on if you he want. I mean, he turned it into a whole bunch more. <laughs> Guy lives in gold. He made his curtains in the Oval Office. He turned them from blue to gold. I'm just saying that's what people believe in that are voting for him. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's a popular. Yeah. And I think the basic reasoning that they go through is that they hope he will fulfill whatever it is that they thought he would deliver for them. Hope. Cruel hope that escaped from Pandora's box. And the only trouble with that is that you have to ask whether the person who's going to deliver on the hope, what his past record is. That's all. A failed casino beauty pageant host yeah. with ties to the Russian mafia. That's right. That's right. He's a reality show character. And Whittaker, Whittaker, Whittapeaks, whatever. How do they pronounce it? Wikileaks. Wikileaks. Yeah. That gentleman who's running that says he has the data on Trump's income tax and is going to release it. Oh, so good. Oh, that's that's finally, somebody. Well, it's an, it's oh, it's someone's got to leak this stuff. I mean, yeah. if people are in the know, right? He's just the president of the United States. Everybody should, people should know. That sounds so realistic. Well, good luck. <laughs> You'll find out the guy's involved with the Russian mob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a small thing. No, I, mean. I mean, how could you be a casino boss and not be involved in the Russian mob? That's just that right. Yeah. I mean, that you, hey, it's Pierre, impossible to imagine that. I asked before I asked you about the Trump supporters. Well, it's East Coast. How you explain them? Here right? it's Chinese. But now I'm interested in how did the polls get it so wrong? leading up to the election. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. Uh, there were people who have a reliable record of, of using statistics and who are good researchers, and they all concluded the same thing, which is Trump would win. Hmm. No, I, from what I saw from the polls again and again, she was... No, no, no. Polling better than him. No, you have to see whether polls are going to interview people who are critical to the election. That's all. You have to look at the sample size and how they came to it. That's all. Yeah. And you'll see in every case they went and did not go after the kinds of people who, who were traditionally voted for Trump. Hmm. All they had to That's do all. Three it's states it's, it's a, like... Uh, our good friend Michael uh, uh, Moore. Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. Michael Moore. Oh, yeah, yeah. They said, hey, how did you guess? How, how did you know in August that he was going to win? He says it was easy. He said, I decided to look at the distribution of voting patterns. And I saw three southern states and uh, two southern states and one midwestern states were key. I just visited them and I saw they were overwhelming going for Trump, so I said he's going to win. Hmm. Interesting. Got out of New York City and in, into where people... That's all. I just, it just struck me as like, I mean, when polling, polling for Obama and his opponents you know, like they were calling him to win, and Obama won, right? But I, I've never seen this, I mean, not that I paid attention to politics for that long, but it just seems like a major failure on the part of people predicting that Hillary's gonna win, 
And now nobody's talking about it anymore. They're talking about everything he's got going on now. But it go by popular travesty. vote, she did. She won by three million votes. Moore didn't do that. He didn't go for popular vote. He said, let's see the critical states and how many people are supporting Trump. That's what's going to determine the election, the electoral college, not the popular vote. Yeah, but the he poll, was right. The polls in all those states were saying something different. Well, okay. Kelly Times was one of the only polls I think that had Trump winning almost the whole time for months prior. Right. Really? No, see. For the real clear politics, average of polls or poll polls? Yeah, it should be an open and close, close case. I mean, you either take a look at how they, how they came to their sample and whether it was representative of the kinds of uh, areas that would be predictive, and you, you either do it or you don't. I know a lot more about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it used to be my field. Well, yeah. do you think that Trump is going to address Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, and Florida? Michigan. Is he going in Michigan? Is he going to? It, I don't think the kinds of things he's doing right now are going to help those states. Um, oh, I don't. I don't believe he's going to deliver on any of the any of the policies other than what we know in the past. He's favors, okay. which is basically himself. Very strange to have, but yeah. But I mean, the guy is curious. We we have to give him that. We've not seen a president yet that's saying, "I'm willing to take on any business for the sake of the common man." Right? Strong arming corporations hey, to, to come back over this here. This is the thesis of Teddy Roosevelt. Mm. Right? Breaking up the monopolies. Right? The difference is the difference in their integrity. That's all. Of course he has a great plan. He's not going to be able to do it. He can't change his spots. Mm. Mm. Uh, or I would love to see someone change that dramatically. Oh, I'm all for it. Yeah, but appointing billionaires has not yeah. looked like the path, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, they've started impeachment proceedings now against him, so... Who has? Uh, a couple of major groups. Because oh, oh. he's no. not a legitimate, I mean, he's already billions. against the Constitution, I don't know. so he's not going to last long. What the hell good is billions? Too much money. Thank you. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's not much money. I would love to see him beach. <laughs> oh, but then you might bring in Mike Pence. You can only like, sleep yeah. in one bed. <laughs> you only eat out of one dish, right? Yeah. You only can piss in one toilet. You know, how many bathrooms do you want to piss in? Well, yeah, in bed, I mean, it's easier to pee if you have a corner. You know, I mean... Toilet. I know these people, you know, they got these Much mansions, you know. Uh, well, when I'm in Sedona, there's a, there, we go by, drive by houses so far not occupied. They're palatial. Mansions. Oh. Mansions, yeah. The people have more than one of them. In fact, they have three or four of them. One guy has six. Oh, man. They never go. They never use them. I've never seen them use them. Well, not one case, but you know, again and again, you know, you go. This is this is what happens when you have billions. We are stupid to have them. We have those in Orange too, in the city of Orange, huge homes that are empty. Yeah. And they all have kind of the same look, and they're sprinkled all over. Yeah. Anyhow. That's all of. That's all of Newport Beach. Yeah. The yeah. Time to close up. Why don't we close up the joint, huh? Huh? You know, the funny, the funny thing about billions <clears throat> is that you can't take it with you. That's all. That's the only problem with them. But, but I think they have the theory that they're going to bequeath it to their family. <laughs> <laughs> they think they'll win. <laughs> have the most money at the end. Well, greed has no answer.